basis for her check fraud conviction. Plus, new speculation tonight that Casey Anthony is ditching million dollar TV deals for therapy. TMZ reports Jose Anthony Baez is getting her professional treatment for serious mental issues. So, is Casey off to rehab? Joining me, criminal defense attorneys Rachel Kuba and Joey Jackson. Also with us, Stacy Stacy Kaiser, psychotherapist and author of How to Be a Grown Up. All right, Joey, what do you think? Do you think this is going to stick? Well, in, in terms of the probation or the rehab, Mike, the, I mean, this, I don't the know. probation. Is, you think? You think? <laughs> well, you think is, there's any standing here? You know what? You know what it is, Mike. I think that all of us have very strong opinions about her and whether or not she should have been convicted or not. And I think the crux of it, Mike, is going to turn on whether the probation was contemplated as an original part of her sentence. Is this something the judge is now doing as a result of her getting off of the other case? Or did the judge really contemplate in her release that she should serve probation? In the event that the judge did not, to amend the order now is legally problematic. And I think the defense team is going to hold the judge and the court accountable and get this thing nulled and void in terms of an emergency hearing that will happen expeditiously, Mike. Well, Rachel Kugel, criminal defense attorney and the, for the Kugel Law Firm in New York City, uh, Judge Strickland, remember, he was taken yeah. off the case. He's the one who said after this check fraud conviction, $644 and, and some odd cents, that if she was acquitted, she would serve one year probation. That's true, but at this point, it's too little too late. He signed the order, even if the order wasn't written the way he had intended. It was signed. It might have been an oversight. But regardless of any of that, she served the probation. Whether it was as the judge intended or not, it was served. And at this point, the defense would have a very meritorious double jeopardy argument. And I wouldn't be surprised if we end up uh, away from Judge Strickland and, uh, and outside of that completely and take it out of his control completely. Well, Rachel, it's funny you mention that because just moments ago, Cheney Mason, a noted defense attorney as part of Casey Anthony's defense team, he released a statement to In Session's Gene Casares. And it says basically, we will be moving to quickly disqualify Mr. Strickland for the second time in having any dealings with Casey. We are seeking to set aside and vacate the order that he entered today, there was no notice, no motion, no hearing. But Joey Jackson, I have never heard of serving probation while you are still behind bars. Help me understand that one. <laughs> Well, well, this is true. I mean, generally speaking, probation is something which the court now has an opportunity to supervise a defendant to ensure that there's no commission of new offenses, that not, they're not doing anything that would further get them into any trouble or anything else. However, in this particular situation, when she was originally sentenced on the actual uh, fraud charge, she was actually dealing with this other case. She was incarcerated at the time and did, in fact, her probationary time lapse based on the fact that she was incarcerated. And so th they are going to have to identify what the issues are, fight over these issues, and I think they really can prevail here, Mike. But, Rachel, do you think this would be, as what the defense team is saying, basically double jeopardy because but I, because I still don't get it that you can't serve probation while you're locked up. Well, it's certainly very unusual to serve probation while you're locked up, but if probation visited her, um, if she complied with whatever they required, for example, probation might ask you to do a program, something in jail, something she had to complete. If she in fact did that, and she could have still been violated on uh, while incarcerated if she had had you know, a fight while in jail, for example, or had done something behaviorally in jail that was unacceptable. She could have been violated during that time. So as long as she was subject to probation and they took it on, I think it's double jeopardy, and I think the defense will prevail. Well, it's going to be interesting because if she comes back to Orlando, the probation office for Orange County is right down the street, Joey Jackson, from the jail. So are we looking at another Casey Anthony Circus, possibly? 
<laughs> you know what? That's exactly what this is, Mike. What is the what? What interest are we serving here, and what is the purpose served? The fact is, is the judge may not like it. You, Mike, may not like it. I or Rachel may not even like it. I don't know that she was acquitted. But the point is, is that she fought the case. She prevailed in the case. There's no reason years later now for the long arm of the law to come snatch her back and say you need supervision at this point. She's getting her rehab, as we'll get into later. She's getting her help, as we'll get into later. And so just let her live her life. But Rachel, she was in jail for that theft, that fraud case. I, I'm, I'm just telling you, look, you know, as an investigator, I would be, hey, she didn't, do, she didn't serve her probation for that fraud. She was locked up, probation set up. So if you are released from jail, that you make sure you behave yourself for one year in the state of, of Florida, in Orlando. But, well, two things. One is probation took it on. So if it was inappropriate or improper as a sentence, this was not the time to say it. The time to say it was a year ago. And in fact, I think she's actually completed the probation a few months before even her release. So this is not the time to, to have said it. Um, if probation took it on and she served it, then the sentence is served. As far as having to be in Orlando, it's actually not uncommon at all to have someone serve probation in another state. I mean, we see that all the time. I see people that get in trouble here in New York that live in Virginia, you know, and, and their probation gets transferred to Virginia. So that's something that happens all the time. And in her case, I don't think we're going to see her come back at all. I think there's a real credible threat to her safety from being here. And her attorneys are going to push the, put that forward and uh, you know I don't think they're going to, going to see her come back to report at all mm. I think her attorneys are going to handle it without her well you know we're going to be following to see if she does show up at the probation office